Hello, my name is Sharon Hurst. Welcome back to my studio. So glad that you could come and join me again. Today I want to talk about something a little different. We're going to explore the potters. Sounds strange, but I'm talking about the pottery colours. If you imagine Wedgwood plates and you think about the blue and the pink and the white, and the green on these plates. The three colours, blue, pink and green, are going to be the colours that we're going to be playing with. They're unusual, but you see that also means that we have choices as artists when we're dealing with something that's not quite mainstream. These colours do all sorts of strange things that other paints might not necessarily do. And with that in mind, it's a good idea to explore how they work, how they mix together, whether they granulate, how opaque are they, all of that technical stuff, which sounds so terribly complicated, but isn't necessarily. You and I, together, we're going to sit down and we're going to work out just what's what and what we might do with them. So join me at the drawing board and let's see what we can do. Okay, here we go. These are the paints that I'm talking about. We've got Potter's Blue here, Potter's Pink, Potter's Green, and this is a tube, these are by the SAA, and this here is a tube by Windsor and Newton. So uh, you can see that they're all the same. The colors are the same hue and pigment in inside. I'll put that away for now. We'll use these and we'll give them a go. And I'd like to say to you, the very first thing that you need to do when you're, you've got a new paint, anything that's different is give yourself time to do a test piece. These three paints originated from, of course, the factories because Wedgwood developed them for their own designs on the plates and once again we are lucky we get to use all the lovely leftover bits and pieces. Now I'm going to widen this view out so that you can see my test piece and you can see what I do with my paints. Everything that is new, always, always, I come into it and I do this. A basic, let me get a, a brush so that I can point with that. A basic blob of the colour, put it on the paper, see what it looks like. This here is damp paint and I've dropped water into it to see if the water pushes back. And you can see very obviously that with the pink it's much more effective. Another good little thing to do with your paint, paint yourself a little wet circle of colour and then a blob of water and then from the blob of water go across to the paint till it touches and see whether the paint will run into the water. Now none of these are particularly good at this. You can see that it hasn't travelled far, you don't have a round colour here, so it hasn't managed to bridge the gap and go into the pond of water. And in actual fact with the blue you can see, let me bring you in a little bit so that you can see, with the blue the water has actually run from here into the paint. The paint hasn't moved at all, so the pink and the green are better at this. This is just a splodge of colour in the middle to see if it granulates what it does, and it certainly does. And that's because the pigment, uh, big, big grains of colour in this particular paint, big grains, and that means that they nestle down into the dips in the paper. This is what's happening here, this is called granulation and it's where it nestles down and goes into the dips of the paper. So you can actually see the pattern of the paper here. That is the pattern of the blanket that the paper sat on when it was made. Interesting. 
A nice wedge of solid colour, which is always good to see how opaque it is or how transparent. All three are very, very opaque. And that means if you painted a dark line behind these and you put it over quite thickly, it would obliterate the dark line. And that's because all three colours have quite a bit of white in them and that makes them opaque. And then here I've sprinkled salt. And again, the salt works better on some colours than others, but you do get this kind of cl cluttering of, of pigment and salt like this. It's not a particularly clean event, but it will give it texture for you if you want it to. And then see what happens when you thin it with water. Put the paint down and then pull the colour out, draw it out and see what happens. And you can see with the blue here particularly that the granulation is particularly good here with lots of water. Always, always give yourself the chance to paint a sheet like this to see what happens and where it goes. It's exciting, it gives you the chance to understand what you're working with. Let's put that aside. What we're going to do for the minute is just paint a very, very basic landscape. We'll use plenty of water so that we can see what happens when we use these colours and how they react. I don't really want to do too much mixing in the palette. I've put the palette there so that you can see what I'm doing. And I do want to introduce water onto this before I start. And I'm going to start initially with the sky. It's a good idea to use a decent sized hate brush, something like this. This is goat's hair, so it's nice and springy. It springs back. It's multi because um, I really love this brush and it's pathetic. I need a new one and I really ought to treat myself to a new one. I'm being being pathetic. The sky, it's a good idea to divide your picture into thirds. Don't divide your paper in half, it, or it looks uncomfortable. So thirds is good. I'm going to have a sky, I want to do a line of trees through the middle and this is foreground. Therefore I'm coming up here and I'm going to wet this area and the reason why I'm doing this is because the paper will then take the water and it won't guzzle the paint. It'll give me time to paint and time to breathe. And that's what I want. Just a bit of time. I think it is a very good idea to have dark around the edges of your picture. So if I take my blue and I'm going to just drop that across the picture to start with. You see how thick the paint is? So you need to work it, but look how that's granulating already and molting. Oh, Sharon, do treat yourself to a new brush, girl. So we can see how that's granulating. Can you see it nestling down into the fibres of the paper? Very exciting. If I bring the pink in and I mix the pink up here in the corners, a bit more blue. Oh, it makes the most scrummy mauve. I love that colour. Look at that. Look at that. I just love it. Bit of pink, bit of blue. And now I'm just going to drop a couple of banks of clouds. Look at it, look at the way it blossoms. This, the way it bleeds out, it's called blossoming and it's beautiful. Come in here with a few little bits. I don't like the way that's blue there, so we'll just move it. And the granulation is gorgeous. It's really working well. And if we want to soften those clouds a little bit, the undersides, I don't like these sort of blobby round areas here. I'm going to rinse my brush. And then I'm going to dab my brush, get rid of the water that's on the brush, and then come in and just soften the undersides. And it should give you a lighter area, which will make it look as though the sun's shining up onto your clouds. Got a hair there. 
you wretch, go away. There we go. I'm just going to let that do its own thing. What I might do to break up some of this, it, it's too solid there, is come in with a bit of the blue and introduce a bit of that blue up through here. And I don't think you can deny that that really is the softest, loveliest. I just, I like it very much. I've got real shine on the paper. I'm sorry about that. Can't do much about that at the moment. I'm going to just... You see, I don't like those bubbles too much. So rinse your brush, make sure it's really clean and then get rid of the water, that's the key. And then shake the brush and I'm going to just come in and tweak that. Pull that, pull it, that's it. That will do me. Okay, come along there, I'm going to pick up the drip, the water line, pick up the drips. And then leaving that middle area through there for now, because that's going to be our tree line. And I want a bit of white underneath the trees. I want to come in here and lay in this area here. Our light area is there. So I want to keep this quite light through the foreground here. And again, this darkness, I want to echo it round the edges because that frames your picture and you look into it. I'm using Bockingford here. Again, I like my Bockingford. So this is just a 140 pound Bockingford. And the point about Bockingford is you get this gorgeous granulation thing going on here. Really, really enjoy that with a picture. I want to come through now and introduce this area through here. I'm going to do that. Just want to turn that light away to see if I can get rid of the shine for you. We want the light, don't we? But we don't want too much shine. Okay, through here, I'd like to introduce some of the green. Again, I'm going to wet it, but not right up to this wet line here. Bring the water through so that I can work it. I think I'd like to introduce some salt, so have that ready. And this time I'm intending to bring a bit more pink through my landscape to give it warmth, like that. So we'll put that through there to start with. And then I want to introduce the green. So this beautiful, soft, gentle green through here. Don't mix too much unless you deliberately want to mix your colours. If you want to see the green, just use it on its own separately. If I bring it down into the pink, I'm going to lose my my colours. I need to ensure this stays light. So again, I'm rinsing, dabbing my brush, getting rid of the water, and I want to pull it back. Don't pull it out, pull it back on itself. That's it. And then that will clear my light area. And now I want to introduce this lovely sort of pinky, purpley colour through here. So mixing these two together. I want more blue than pink. I want it to be purpley as we had before. I'm going to pull that down into the corners, down through here. And then this will be my horizon line where my trees are going to be through there. We'll pull that back in a minute. Don't worry about that. And I want a bit through here, but I don't want it as startling as that. So I've got colour on my brush, I'm going to get rid of it, wick it on my cloth so that I have residual colour, but not too much, and then I can do that. And now I can mix some of that into my green. And I want to bring some through this pink here, 
So these are shadows on the land. And then we need to get rid of some of the snubby nose. So rinse your brush, get rid of the drips. And again, don't pull it out, I'm going to pull it back. Pull it back on itself because I want that light area reserved. I'd like very much to have that pale colour through there, but I want to have that light through there. This here, don't like the way it just stops. So come in, pull it back. Get rid of that bobble by pulling it back. Clean the brush. I've got a bit of a blunt end there. So again, come into it, pull it back. I'm going to get rid of the drip along the bottom of the page. If I leave that, that will wick back up and then that will give me cauliflowers back up into the paint. So if we get rid of that drip line all the way along the bottom, that works. That's a bit snubby nosed there, so I'm going to again pull it back. Do we want a little bit more pink in there? Might do to echo the cloud. So again, take the pink, thin colour, thin, thin colour. So that's too much. So again, water on my brush. I'm just going to dry it. Is that enough? No, that's not enough. Just through like that. And as long as this is shiny, I can work it. When it starts to look matte, like the sky is, please leave it alone. Just leave it alone. If we go into that, when it's, when it's matte, that's when we get the cauliflowers. So just be careful. Here's my salt, and I'd like a little bit of effect down here in these bottom corners. So I'm putting some in my hand. I'm not going to sprinkle. I'm just going to put some in my hand and introduce some through here. And honestly, please, less is more. That's only a little. I don't want too much. I love the way this is. Can you see the way that that's weeping down there? Let me bring you in a little bit closer. But the way that that is weeping here is fantastic. It looks as though it's raining or it's about to rain. And this is what makes it all so exciting. So that is really, really wet into wet. And I'm going to allow that to dry now and let the salt work. And then I will come back to you in a minute when that's done and we will paint our tree line. Here we are back again. And brush wise, I think I'm going to use a number eight. And this is um, a number three. Both sable brushes, I quite like my sable brushes. And we're going to look into this picture and see what we can see. The salt has worked. And all you do with that is just brush it away. Just brush it away with your hands. You don't need to worry any more than that. And I'm looking at this and I know for a fact that I'd like to keep this light area through here. This is what I want to use to see through the trunks of my trees. I realise that in so doing, I'm probably going to lose some of this, which is a great shame because it's rather beautiful, but I'm just going to have to get over myself and get used to the idea. There's nothing I can do about it. It's just the way the picture's worked out because I want this dark area here to be my kind of horizon under the trees. Trees are not as tricky as they look. We're going to use all of the same colours. I think what I might do is mix up some of the purple before I start so that I have it there ready and waiting. And that's ready to go. What happens if we take some of that and add some of the green? Does it make a mess? Oh, it's quite interesting, look. Okay, we'll leave that, we'll, we'll go with that. Bit more of the blue, make it a bluey green. Okay, so we've got that. I have my colours ready and waiting to go. The key to this one is that you, I want to leave a line of water through here. I'm going to come through and introduce just a line of what I'm not coming right down to this dark. 
And then coming through there, across the picture, and I'm just going to taper it into the middle. And this is the point now, darker on the edges, drop it in, and I'm going up into the dry sky so that I have a sharp top edge to my trees. But the paint is running and bleeding down into the water. OK, so you get this kind of blossoming effect. That's what I want. Here's the greeny colour. And I'm going to add just some green on its own. I'm going to rinse the brush. I want to keep it quite clean because if I don't, these colours will turn into mud without even trying very hard, to be honest. And a little bit of the pink dropped in there too. And we're also going to drop some blue in. So clean, pick up the blue, and then just drop a little bit of that in here as well. So trunks, what are we going to do about the trunks? I'm going to go to my smaller brush now. And with that, I want to introduce some water. Bring it down. So that I have the look of trunks. Smaller as we get to the middle. And just pull the colour down with the water that you have on the brush. When we're getting through to a, a thinner area like this, or we want it to be smaller, just a damp brush. And just pull some of it through like this. I don't want too much there. These trees are getting smaller as they go away from us. And we have to ground them because looking like that, it looks dopey because you have all these stumps. So rinse your brush and you're going to come to your cloth, dab the extra liquid off and then just come in underneath and pull all of that together as simply as that. When you get to this end, just pull it. Don't like that stumpy bit there. You're just going to soften that so that it vanishes. Here we are. Right, should we do that again on the other side now? I don't think that's quite dark enough there, so I'm going to pick up some more of the purpley colour. I just want to make that a bit darker there. And I just rinse, I just cleaned my brush on the cloth so that it's still a dirty brush. And I'm just going to, there you go, so that it's not a blob. All right. I think this side same applies. I want to take my water and I'm going to bring it through here, trying to salvage some of that and bring it through to the middle. So we've got our water line through there and then go start with the dark, drop it in, come up into the dry sky. So a little bit along there. Let it blossom, let it do its own thing. And then I'm going to come into the greeny mix. And I want to drop some of that through, like that. Through to here. Now we'll need a little bit of the pink. Just hints. This paint, some of it floods like this, some of it you put it on and it sits there quite stubbornly. Don't like that very hard flat edge. So we'll do that. And I want to just echo this blue that I've got over here by coming in. And that kind of lifts it. You see how that echoes the colour in the sky and it just brightens it a little bit. Now, this hard end here, just like we did with the clouds, we're going to rinse and we're going to dab off the extra and that, I'm not going to pull it out, I'm going to get hold of it and initially I'm going to push it back. Rinse and dab and then I'm going to get hold of it and push it back. Don't like, you see how that's so flat? 
don't like that. So I'm just going to come in. That's better. And then same as we did on the other side, get hold of this, pull some of the trunks through so that you've got this light through the trees. Yeah, so that makes it more interesting, gives the eye something to look at. The trunks get bigger as they come towards us. This line of trees is coming towards us, give the impression. Just going to drop a little bit of the blue in there as well, just to make it look more interesting. Bit of the pink in there. So that it's not all just bits and dibs and dabs and dobs. And then I want to come in with a damp brush, get rid of the drips, and I'm going to pick it up at the bottom of all of those and just pull that through like that. Now if you get a water line, as I have done here, rinse your brush, nice clean water, come in underneath it and pull and pull and just keep clean, not too wet, and just keep pulling it until you get to an area where it won't watermark and that's how you get rid of that. It just pushes it and pulls it away. So that works there. And then all I want to do really with this, I want to give the impression of it just being quiet and peaceful and serene. I'm going to come in here with my grey purpley colour and my fine thin brush. And all I want to do is in this area is introduce a few little birds. That's too big and it's too dark. So get hold of it, clean brush, clean brush, not too wet, and just clean brush, not too wet. And that end, I'm not going to pull it out, I'm going to pull it back. Okay. So mistakes happen and it's not the end of the world. It doesn't matter. We can deal with it. I've got, what have I got? One, two, three, four, all four. No, let's have an, we want an odd number. So I'm coming out here, something up through there. That'll do us. Realistically, we don't need much more. All I might think about is using a mix of my this colour and this. And I'm going to come in here and just introduce one or two, maybe a fence post. It's going to disappear down behind this whatever it is. And I'm simply going to take some blue on the brush and some pink on the brush, both colours, and I'm going to just sweep that across like that. Have I got enough blue? just be able to put darker side to my fence posts. There we go. And if you want to, you can give the hint of barbed wire on there, just a couple of little bits and pieces through here. We can soften the bottom of the fence post, damp brush again, and don't come in and pull it out. Go into it and nudge it. Rinse and dab and go into it and just nudge it. Rinse and dab and go in and just nudge. So that you get that softness at the bottom of the post and it's not solid, you know, solid and hard and stumpy. We don't want that. And realistically, I wouldn't do too much more to something like that. I just want to keep it simple and easy. The only other thing that we could contemplate maybe is with the pale greeny grey on the brush, just introduce the bare hint of some greenery over here because it would be nice to balance this side here. 
just pull it through as though we've got something there. And really, all you need to do with something like that now is sign it and let the world know it's yours. But the... Oh, what have I done there? I've managed to... No. Okay, let's deal with that. Somehow, I've managed to, to scuff that with my brush or my hand. If you land up with a mistake like that, let me bring it in so that you can see it. scuffed it somehow. So damp brush. So I'm literally wetting the brush, cleaning it, get rid of the, the moisture on the brush, come in, keep it clean, rinse, get rid of the water, and push it back. Rinse and dab. And push it back. There you go. And if you need to reinforce the edge of that tree, you can do that, but please wait until it's dry. Don't do it now. Wait until it's dry. So coming back out so that you can see it. There is your little picture painted with the potters. So potters pink, potters blue, and potters green. Three lovely colours. It's just a case of knowing what to do with the little devils but that's where I would go with that. So here we have the potters and a little picture. Thank you very much for joining me today. This is Sharon Hurst signing out. Until next time, see you again soon I hope.